Praise the Lord and good morning everyone on this Thanksgiving morning. Uh, bright and early here we're uh, looking into the Word of God in Psalm 119. Again, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving today and look forward to hearing uh, reports back from your uh, day with family and friends uh, tomorrow morning uh, unless you're out Black Friday shopping. Here we are again with a pre-recorded devotion due to my own uh, travels um, to spend time with family over the holiday as well. Uh, but I'm glad that we have this opportunity and this technology uh, to be able to come together uh, for this time of prayer at whatever time it works out for you uh, during this uh, busy day. Imagine a person who responds to every question with the exact same answer. You might stop asking them questions and just observe and learn uh, just as much or more from watching their lives. The author of Psalm 119 responds to every challenge with the same answer. His answer is simple, live according to God's word. Uh, today we're going to read the next three sections of this psalm, verses 25 through 48. I want you to put yourself in the author's shoes and try to imagine what they are facing in life. Each of these eight verse sections hold a different life situation. Let me read it to you. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck into thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Miss, uh, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in the way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Have you ever been in any of these three life situations? How did you respond to those circumstances? I noticed in verse 32 that the writer has moved from weary sorrow to running. You know, counter to what many believe, God's commands do not hold us back, but they actually set us free. The more that we are heeding and abiding, heeding his word and abiding in it, the more freedom that we experience. Ask yourself today, are there areas in my life that God is asking me to line up with his word, but I've been resisting? That resistance to the word of God is what's holding me back. But if I will take it to heart, the word will set me free. The Bible says, uh, Jesus said in one New Testament passage, thy word is truth. Um, we know that uh, that actually what the psalmist said there, Jesus said that he that the son has set free, you shall know the truth. That's the scripture I'm looking for. You shall know the truth and the truth shall uh, make you free. And he that the son has set free, he's the word made flesh. He that the son has set free shall be free indeed. Amen. So let's not resist the word today, but let's cherish it, hold on to it, abide in it. 
and experience the freedom that comes from that. Amen. We want to pray for your needs today. I can't see what your needs are uh, this morning because I'm pre-recording this. Uh, but if you'll post those, I'll be able to see them later in today and come back and pray specifically for those needs. And the other members of our team will see them as well. But let's just pray a general prayer right now for this day, a prayer of blessing and a prayer of healing and provision for whatever the needs are of this day. And we know that God is going to hear and answer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today on this special day, this day of thanksgiving. We know that every day should be that kind of day for us, that we would enter into your very gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. But on this day where we have set aside a special time of reflection, I pray that each person today would would benefit greatly, Lord, from that reflection, that they would they would allow their minds to go back and reflect and, and dwell upon your blessings. And out of that, we know that our faith will be increased for whatever things we're facing right now. And I know there's many things we're facing in our families. As people gather around the dinner table today, it will not be without issues, without tensions, without things that need to be resolved, even in our close relationships. But we know, God, that if we will heed your word, if we will ingest your word daily, if we will abide in your word, then you will abide in us and we can ask what we will and it shall be done. Thank you for the freedom that comes from your word and thank you for the boldness that we have to declare it today. Coming to your throne of grace and believing, Lord, for answers to our prayers in time of need. I pray for every family today, God, that they would receive what they need from you, strength and comfort and help. Those who have lost someone close to them recently and find themselves heavy hearted during this holiday time. We just pray, God, that you would strengthen and comfort them and lift them up today. And we pray, God, for each person that's afflicted in body and perhaps that would try to come to the forefront of their mind today instead of thankfulness. I pray you would help them to see what you've done for them and where you brought them from and where you're taking them to Oh, hallelujah. We declare your power, your healing, your victory in our lives today. And we thank you for your blessings. Let every person that needs a healing touch in body today receive it, I pray. Those who need um, a work in their home, Lord, a spiritual work, a work in their families, we pray, God, that they would receive that today from your hand. And we give you the thanks and the praise for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'll see you tomorrow morning right here at 7.30 a.m. on Facebook for this final pre-recorded devotion before we return to our live prayer and devotions on Monday morning. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow morning.